Princeton University is one of the most expensive schools in America, with a total student budget of $72,720. But the university offers generous financial aid packages worth $55,200 on average. Still, part of the school's social scene can be out of reach, Molly Milligan reports. Prospect Avenue, just off campus, has long been party central for Princeton students, but membership in the storied clubs here comes with a steep price tag. Club dues can top $10,000 a year. That forces students on full financial aid, like junior Sidra Ahmad, to consider eating in the dining halls or cooking for themselves. So I think like an unlimited meal plan um, for the year, or is it per semester, is, I think for the year itself is 6,800 about. And so what that would mean is, is that in the fall semester, I would get half of that for living independently. And in the spring semester, I would get the other half of that for living independently. Financial aid packages can include help for meals at eating clubs. That's a policy that began under Princeton's previous administration, says Cloister Inn President Hannah Painter. So from my understanding, Shirley Tillman, the pre when she was president, included a chunk of money that is supposed to make the eating clubs more accessible because their membership dues are a little bit more than the board dues in the dining halls. While a couple thousand dollars might not be a huge sum for some people, for a lot of students, it's a lot to ask for and it makes the eating clubs seem a little bit out of touch and inaccessible to students. And especially because the university is working so hard, more and more so every year, to make the <coughs> university undergraduate population more diverse in their socioeconomic backgrounds. The university's contributions won't pay social fees, and those bills can prevent low-income students from joining the clubs. I wouldn't say that the eating clubs represent the socioeconomic backgrounds of campus as a whole on, at Princeton because of the high costs and because of the problems that we've been having with making the clubs financially accessible. Ahmad was torn between saving money and having a vibrant social life. So initially, I wanted to go independent. Um, I think it was it was a bit more feasible um, in the sense of like affording like independent, like just living independently. In the end, social life was the draw for Sidra, despite the tab. So joining an eating club, it's a lot more expensive than um, just having being on the meal plan. You have to figure out a way to cover it, like whether it's with a loan, whether you know we ask our parents for help. Junior Giselle Aribe, also on financial aid, didn't want to ask her parents for help. I know that um, financial aid goes up a little bit in order to cup to like try to subsidize the eating club fees, but it's still like two thousand. I think that what I need to pay in the fall and a thousand in the spring. And my parents don't even know I have to pay this. Um, so like what I'm doing is I'm just getting a loan from financial aid, which is really funny because it's like Princeton money, but they're loaning me it. But anyways, yeah. Both Ahmad and Aribe think the university could do more to help students out. I understand because it comes part of my financial aid package, um, and it, but it doesn't necessarily make sense to me why it's not covered because the school can definitely afford to help a few students pay off their real pay off their dues. I heard that they had like a two billion increase this year in their endowment, but <laughs> that's just me. For Painter, it's not just about money; it's about the circle of friends. I know, just from my personal experience as president, it's heartbreaking when you get someone who's really interested in your club, wants to be a part of it, even you, tell, you say that, oh, come check it out for a week, like come get a couple meals, come to this event, meet me, meet this person, just try to get a feel of this is something you want, and they realize that it's a great fit for them, and they fall in love with the club, and then once I give them the contract, they reach out to me a couple days later, unfortunately, to say that it's not going to be an option for them. So that's really the heartbreaking thing for me that I've ex experienced as a president. Um, but I have no idea like what the statistic is or anything, but just qualitatively, it's, it's hard for me because I feel like I can't do anything. I have, I have no tools, basically. No tools because Cloister operates on a tight budget and can't afford to offer subsidies. That means economic diversity may be a tough mission for many of Princeton's eating clubs. Reporting from Princeton University, this is Molly Milligan.